All right, looks like I'm live. Hold on, I, all right, this is good. It's almost time, almost 8.30, today's day six. Welcome anybody who's here today. Okay, it's 8.30 now, so I shall get started, okay? So today is day six, and we will be talking about research argument. And to me, it's one of the most, actually, it's the most important element in a research paper because if you don't have a, a research argument, it's no longer a research paper, okay? So we're going to dive deeper what it means and how do you actually craft a research argument. So to recap what we did yesterday, we were talking about uh, the different academic writing style. So we talked about the voice, how to be clear, how to be precise, how to be uh, and concise, and how to be precise. Today, we will talk about uh, forming an argument and also a special element at number six, which is show and tell. That will really elevate your paper a lot more. Okay, so what is a research argument? A research argument in simple form, it just means making a claim by giving a set of reasons. Hi, Dr. Carr. Thanks for joining me at this, uh, at this early morning on a Saturday. Wonderful. So feel free to ask any questions in between, okay? So uh, a research argument is, um, in the simplest form, making a claim by giving a set of evidence or giving your stand by giving a bunch of evidence, okay? It is, um, if you have a research paper without a research argument, it's almost like an opinion piece or a blog post. So it's no longer, it no longer has the research component to it because a research paper is actually uh, a form of getting into the scientific conversation, but we do it via paper. So it's almost like you're debating within the community using written words, okay? So I will talk about the building blocks of effective arguments. So remember we said the first thing is you must have a claim. And what you mean a claim is you must take a stand. You can't be um, wishy-washy about it. You, you have to be, um, you must assert, you must be assertive with, with what you think. And... Um, just because you use the word argue doesn't mean it's argument. Sometimes we make a mistake by saying, um, I argue that this evidence shows this. Or um, I argue just because you use the word argue does not mean that's argument. So we need several elements. The first one is claim, taking a stand. One of the example is um, the use of drug A will decrease the mortality of patients with lung cancer. Okay, then how do you add evidence to your argument? So first, you can either add facts, any statistics, you can add your own results, or you can also add other people's results. So to uh, add a, an example is our study findings found that the use of drug A was associated with hazard ratio of 0 0.8. Additionally, this is other people's study, studies X and Y also showed, have also shown that patients on drug A had increased life, expen uh, increased life expectancy of three years. So now you have two evidence to support your claim. So that is the, the foundation level. But if you want to level up and get it even further, then we're going to add two more elements. So now how to level up. Level up, you uh, add a counterclaim. So what is a counterclaim? That means you are addressing a potential objection to your claim. So in your scientific uh, community, there's always a conversation uh, um, ongoing. So some people already think what is effective, people already have opinion what is not effective. So if you know the potential objection, what you really want to do is to address them and then refute them or uh, uh, respond to this objection. So I'm gonna give you an example. So remember, we just talked about drug A improving um, the expectancy and um, uh, patient's life, but then you know in the conversation that uh, the, the scientific community maybe at this time wants to talk about quality of life. So for example here, given that recent studies have shown uh, previous therapies were associated with large amount of side effects, professional societies have recommended that physicians should use therapy that focus on, focuses on the quality of life more than life expectancy. 
So now somebody is going to block your main claim. Then you want to refute it, your response to this objection. However, our results have showed, our results showed that the participants who took drug A had minimal side effects and their quality of life were not affected. So now when you're building on these two on top of your original claim, you are making it stronger and also making your reviewers and readers uh, think that, oh, you actually know your field really well and you have thought through all the different scenarios how people would think about this. So it really strengthens your argument. All right, so to recap, these are the four block, building blocks of effective arguments. First, have a claim, um, then an uh, evidence, add counterclaim, and then finally refute the counterclaim. Okay, so now I'm gonna shift gears to show and tell. This trick is going to change uh, your academic writing a lot. So especially for this discussion section. Don't, don't touch. So why do we use show and tell? Show and tell is a good storytelling method. It helps cement the idea into a reader's mind. I need that. Too. Sorry. It's okay. okay. Now I'm gonna uh, share this um, concept called the letter of abstraction. So I know it sounds kind of nerdy here, but bear with me. It's really, once you get this, it will change um, how you think about writing. So at the very top of the ladder is abstract thinking. Think about concepts that have multiple meanings. I'm gonna give an example here that is communication. So uh, communication is a very, com sorry, commun community. Sorry, my kids is touching my computer. So uh, communication is a con is a, an abstract uh, concept. And once you go down the ladder, more concrete is something where people can visualize. So for example, let's go down, okay? Communication is the most abstract form. Then you want to go down even more concrete doctor to patient communication. And if you go down even further, how much deeper can you go? Doctor to patient communication via paper or patient then going down to even most concrete example, patient educational handout given by doctor after a clinic visit. Okay, so how do you apply when you're writing? So if you write your paper with using words that are all top of the ladder, like only abstraction, the reader ends up having more questions than answers. So it's very difficult to understand and also very unsatisfying. So I'm gonna give you an example here. Studies suggest that studies suggest that the main reason for hospital readmission is due to poor communication skills. So that's very high level concept, right? And your reviewer is going to ask, when? What, what sort of communication? When? Between whom? Is it oral? Is it verbal? Is it visual? So it's too vague. You, you need to add a bit more concrete example to it. Then at the opposite end is the bottom of the ladder, where here, you're giving only concrete ideas like facts and technical details, but you, you do not explain the meaning behind these facts. And so it gets really boring and then the readers lose trust. And also sometimes the readers may make any interpretation way they like, okay? So I'm gonna give you an example from a sentence extracted from the discussion section. So uh, our findings show that the incidence rate of death for patients hospitalized with acute kidney injury was 6.3 per 1,000 person years. And then they go on with facts and facts and facts. And so when you read this, the reader is going to ask, okay, so why is this important? Is 6.3 per 1,000, is that a lot or is it very few? Is that a lot compared to other conditions? So there are more questions again on the interpretation of all these facts and statistics. So the main story behind this is when you start writing your uh, research paper, particularly in the introduction and also in the discussion, you need to match both the abstract or top of the ladder to the concrete at the bottom of the ladder. If you find that you are writing too much big high level concept and abstract, then you wanna add more uh, specific condition or things that people can visualize. So I'm gonna show you an example here, okay? So tell, you tell by, this is clinically important. You actually tell the readers how to feel, and, uh, feel about this. You want to tell them it's important because now you give them an example 
a concrete example because accumulating evidence show that even mild acute kidney injury is associated with poorer long-term outcomes. So now you have some sort of high-level concept and you give uh, the readers, oh, this is why, why it's important, a concrete example. Okay, so the task for today, for the first 20 minutes, I want you to come up with one main argument for your paper. So think about what's your claim What's your evidence? It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to write a claim, uh, have a stand, put a few bullet points. What's your evidence? Can you think about a few potential objections so that you can write down your counterclaim? And finally, how do you refute your counterclaim? So do this as an exercise to train yourself on how to think uh, like a, research, a researcher, how to think uh, to create research argument. And that way, when you start writing your paper, you, you write in a different way, not just um, a, a, a robotic way and writing all the statistics or all the results. You actually think with a, a whole reason on what statement you're going to make at the end of the paper. And if you do not have any, um, if you do not have any written work that you can work on or you have any active project, what you can, I can suggest is you can take a journal article and see if you can find the main argument and see if the authors have come up with a claim, how they came up with the evidence, the counterclaim, and how they refute it. So this is a good exercise as well. And then for the last 15 minutes, I want you to do copy work, copy for 10 minutes. Here, focus on the discussion section and also same thing, identify the argument in the discussion section in any of the paragraphs, okay? And so for the past six days, we've been talking about um, developing a writing habit, downloading your uh, academic writing style, and also the different key elements of scientific writing. So I want you to take your time with everything we've talked about so far. Um, I want you to think about what it means for you to publish papers. And is it, um, the, is it going to help you get into competitive residency program or a fellowship program? Does it mean that you get a, a better chance of promotion and also getting a raise? Or finally getting the recognition you need or you deserve and building authority? So when you think of that, um, the, the past six days is we have built a foundation to help you get a, a, a quick start or head start in getting your papers published. But if you want to speed up the process further, you can definitely work with me, uh, either one-on-one -on -one setting or in a group setting. So group setting, um, I am now offering group, um, academic writing talks and also workshop. So um, if you are interested in that, I want you to email me at info at publishmd.com. Um, so uh, in order to be successful in academic writing or in academia, you have to be, uh, you must take the commitment and you must also take uh, massive action. So I don't want you to wait too long. So again, to email me, it is info at publishmd.com. And so tomorrow we'll wrap up by talking about um, overcoming obstacles. And also I will share my um, efficient writing system so that you can you apply yourself and start writing your papers a lot faster. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.